And I think the problem with Biden and his administration is we have a lot of, unfortunately, legacy media is they are the yes men for him. They're, they're gaslighting us and telling us everything's fine. It's like, unfortunately, you're telling us what we see with our own eyes is, is, is not true. Here with our own ears is not true. And that's the problem is we can see it. It's like, I'm not going to sit here and say, uh, talk badly about Biden and, and, and name call him. I, but I do see where the fact that he's a failed leader. Period. End of story. He's failing miserably and his administration's failing. And you, you don't want to, I, I say that confidently, especially with the clients that I work with that tr- and trust me is because we come into their lives, look at the byproducts of their actions around them. Yes. You want to know the truth about how a leader's performing? Look at the the, the, the problems that are, are starting to create around that leader and the byproducts of what they have left in their wake. And right now, the fact is things are only getting worse under this administration. You can gaslight me all day long. A real leader should know when to fall on their sword and say, you know what, I've got to pass the baton. I've got to step back. I've got to do what's right for my country instead of believing in their heads. They know what's right and they're going to grip around that power. And then having yes men, yes men telling everybody, no, no, everything is good. And then bashing the other side. And then this, we have this adolescent childlike high school court, you know, schoolyard fight kind of thing going on in politics. And we're sitting here going, dude, you're leading us right into another major conflict. And you're going to act like we don't see that. Oh my God. And that's the problem. We have our politicians like Lindsey Graham. And uh, I think, who is it? Chuck I, I, you, look, you look at someone like Lindsey Graham and I, I, I think frankly, like the language <sighs> someone like you, him has used on, on Twitter or on, on X immediately after things have happened, like that's unconscionable because you look at that and, it is. and, and this, this came up in the, the conversation with, with Tucker and Putin last night is, is Chuck right. Schumer had made statements about, well, you know, if you don't give us the money for Ukraine now, there's going to be American boots in the ground there in the next year or two. And, <laughs> and Putin's like, the thing our politicians don't consider is Putin says, well, that, that, that's a, a, a threat, a weak threat, but it's a threat. And I think right. they have to consider the, the effects of the things they say. And I don't think they consider that. They, they're not. They, they're giving us the boogeyman scenario, just like he said last night in the interview. Now, you and I talked about it before. It's we don't have to believe or trust everything Putin says, but you've exactly. got to pay attention. There's a, there's a certain the, viewpoint he wants you to have from listening to him. And just, you know, that going sure. into And remember, he is a sophisticated, uh, you know, how do I say it without sounding psych- psychologically speaking? He's very sophisticated in his personality. He worked in an intelligence service. He knows exactly how to play the game, and but he's poised. He's clear. I like that he stayed on topic. He didn't go all over the place. I love how Tucker laid that out for us as well, that he did not uh, filibuster the whole thing. He actually continued and gave us information. But you're right. He looked back to the, the politicians over here. When I saw Lindsey Graham and Chuck Schumer say that, I thought to myself, well, OK, are you guys going to be the first ones to kid up and lead yeah. away? When because I made, the, I made talk- the joke on I made the joke on Twitter, I'm like, all right, Lindsey Graham, if you want to do that, can we give you like a 1918 German yeah. army helmet and a musket and just see how it goes for you? Like, I just yeah, rather yeah. we do that. Yeah, keep your powder dry, chief. Let's see what you got. You know, and at the end of the day, that's that's the problem is, and it makes us kind of, and I get chills going, okay, dude, you're promising things. You're writing checks that we might not be able to, to, to cash here with our, and you're, you're asking guys that have already fought a war for a very long time. Hey, I'll throw those guys back at you. And it's like, what are you doing, guys? What are you, that's not leadership. And you're giving us this boogeyman scenario that... We're going to use our military might, like Putin said last night. You're using your American dollar for your your your, your global foreign political problems, and that's starting to deg- degrade the dollar, but also make you guys look weak. It's causing you guys to to seem like all you have is military might and your money, and you have nothing else to give. That's not leadership. That's not speak softly and carry a big stick at all whatsoever. We don't need right. to use the military for every problem. And I think that's something that just everyone seems to forget is, you know, once again, like I'm not a war guy, Wiley. I don't like people fighting, but at the same time, like strength creates peace. You know, you look, you look at, um, you know, the, 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 the Pax Romana, the first, I think it's like 130 years of the, of the Roman empire after Augustus took over, he put in this system that was a lot of strength and guess what? You know, sure. I, I don't agree with the guy being a dictator, but like there was peace for 130 years. And I think that's what people forget about is peace through strength. Right. And I, I'm not a war guy either. I don't think any veteran you talk to, <laughs> unless they're psychopaths, will tell you we're war people. The reality is, if you ask any real, real warrior, any combat veteran who's actually seen combat, seen the, the casualties of war, the dead bodies, the p- things that the, the harm that is caused, regardless of the purpose or intent, ask any of us that will tell you lost friends is I would rather vote for fight for peace. First, I'm always going to be prepared for war, but I'm never going to say that that's the, the, the number one go-to strategy or tactic to solve sure. problems. 
I, it's you know what I grew up in in, in, in Southern California. I, I've had I've been in hundreds of street fights in my life, and I'm going to tell you, it's like every single one I try to avoid long before they ever became a fight. Right. I would rather walk away, and because it hurts, man, it yeah. just hurts. So take that on a grander scale. Going to war is not. Glory, glory and fun and, and exciting. The idea of getting shot at. And I had somebody who made a, a rude comment to me the other day about going back in. And I thought, you have no idea what you're talking about. It's not, that's not fun. It's not funny uh, to say that. You're going to go back over there and get yourself shot up. And it's like, that's not funny to say that. That's nerve wracking. Yeah. It's not, if you've never been in a two-way rifle range, you don't know what that feels like. 